was limited to time and space, something bigger than him, way up there in the future, can sneak up on him and beat him up. But no, he's already there. He's already see. He knows who holds the marble. He's already know what's in the marble. He can see into the future because he's there. And time, something might surprise him if he, if time was bigger than God. Something was surprising. No, something small or something bigger? No, because he inhabits all of eternity. There's nothing out there bigger. He is the only self-existing God. So he's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. And he's omniscient, knows everything. But we're talking about the love of God, so I had to come up with my own word. <laughs> he is omni-love, and what's the, the highest form of love? Agape. Agape. So he's omni Agape. Agapitan. <laughs> 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 sound like that. He's omni Agapitan. <laughs> he's all love. Let's read this. Let's, let's do it right now. Let's go right through these songs. Because I'm, 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 people want to hear me sing. And I'm going to sing these songs. Just go ahead and Gary and run. If God had all these attributes for us. He is fully capable to lead us along the way. Let me see if I can do a few songs. Not as bright, but maybe those two lines can go down a little bit. Oh, in the shivering postures, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along where the
this, folks. Is it this grace? Amazing. We Amen. talked about that today. Go ahead, Gary, and run this. And I want y'all to help me sing it so that we're going to get too boring. <laughs> Go ahead, Gary, run this. Give you something to do.
somebody else may come and water it. Somebody else may fertilize it. But God will make the, and create the, the increase. Just throw it out there. Just say something. Just yeah. something. Listen to what this song is saying. Dream my was in heaven.
so very glad. I'm so very glad you're here. Amen. You know, folks, all we gotta do is just say something for Jesus. That's a seed. God will take that little seed planted in somebody's heart and do something with it. Just put it there. He'll provide the increase. You hear what John was saying? Just a little seed. How many other seeds have been put in this life? Thousands of seeds. Praying for somebody is a seed. Just be a husband. Just say something for somebody. You may not see the results right away, but when you put that little piece of corn in the ground, do you see a thing growing up right in front of your eyes? Do you see the ear of corn coming into the stalk? No, you don't see it. It takes time. We have messed up for many years of our life. It ain't going to happen and spring up overnight, but water and put a little seed there. And guess what? Is perfect in its that stage of development. The moment it is in the sand, in the sand begin to germinate, it is what perfect in that stage of development. Then when it breaks the soil, no corn on it yet. Was a little little stalk, but it's perfect in Christ at that stage of development. And then when the ear of corn comes out, and then you got all the little, little kernels on that corn. What happened? Do you reap what you sow? Or do you reap more than what you sow? How many ears, how many little kernels of corn did you put in the ground? One. Now what you got on this ear of corn now? You got a bunch of little kernels on that one ear of corn. It could be four or five ears on one stalk, that John. All bearing about 50 kernels or more. So you never reap what you sow. You always reap more. But you got to first of all put the seed there. And folks, when that seed is put there, and we've, that song say, just thank you for just giving to the Lord. One day you'll see the, re the results in heaven. People are going to be coming up and say, John, <laughs> you know, man, do you remember way back there you said a word to the man. And that meant so much to me. Jesus took that with the Holy Spirit and started watering it. So don't be scared to witness. Say something. You don't even have to preach because they can see the word in your life. Sometimes the best sermon is one in shoes when the people can see walking around. It's the best sermon sometimes. Your life is a testimony. Now this is my last song. I'm going to say and it is basically based on this planting. So Jesus says in Matthew 24, please write it down. Matthew 24, verse 14. Tonight, if y'all can come back, I did a study on something called the Great Week of Time. This sister is right. We're just about there. We're just about there. But all the signs and all of the prophetic charts that you may see, they may be good and may, that may be a reason for that, as I have gone through. But there's nothing more certain than any other sign of all that Jesus is about to return and is found in Matthew 24, verse 14. Who has it? Say, read it, sir. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. What end? That's it. That's it's over. Age. But when? What? What happened? What precedes the this the end? Why is that so important? As it reflects the love of God. Why? You ever read? What was it? Everybody needs to know. Everybody needs to know. Opportunity. Opportunity. He wants it was everyone to be saved. Second Peter, third chapter of what? God is not willing, willing that anybody, anybody should perish, but all should come to a sense of repentance. What kind of heart of God is this? I gotta wait, Charles. Somebody.
somebody got to tell them about my love. And then I'm not willing that anybody is to perish. I didn't come to kill people. Jesus, I didn't come to kill people. I didn't come to put them in hell and stomp down on them and burn them forever. That's a damnable doctrine. I came to love people. If you don't believe it, just look at the cross. No greater love than this. Let us run this race of finishing the gospel that is set before us. Fixing our I-E-Y-E, -E, not, not letter I. Fixing our eyes upon Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith for the joy that was set before him. He endured. He endured the cross. Although, what? Joy. What? Jesus, you you enjoyed letting people spit on you, beat you, strip you of your clothes. And because the rest of that verse said, he endured the what? Hebrews 13. He in Hebrews 13, read that. Somebody, I hate to prolong it. <laughs> but but uh, 13 verse 1, 2, 3. So Hebrews 13, 1, 2, 3, and 4, something. But he fixed let us run the race that is what? Set before us. You know, what else? What else? There 13, verses 1, 2, and 3, 4. Please, come on, please. Let brotherly love continue. Yes. 13, do not forget to entertain strangers. Keep going. For by so doing, for, for by so doing some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them. Next verse. Those who are mistreated. Next verse. <coughs> Is it 12? It's read Hebrews 12. Have yeah. 12. It is Hebrews 12. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by, by such a cloud of witnesses, do what? Lay aside every weight. Every weight and do and what? The sin which so easily ensnares us. And what? Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus, fixing our eyes upon him, who's the author and finisher of Who for the joy? The joy. Set before him. He did what? Endured the cross. He endured the cross. The shame, the spite. What kind of shame? Great. Do y'all know they humiliated Jesus? <coughs> they spat in his face. They beat him unmercifully. And then they took all of his clothes off of him. All of his clothes. The ladies had to watch from a, from a distance. They didn't, they didn't want to insult him. But they wanted support, but they didn't want to insult him. And they humiliated Jesus. But Jesus said, for the joy that was set before, set before him, I'll take it. Do all the spitting you want to do. Do all the beating you want to do. Go ahead all and take me to the cross. Go ahead and put those though. Take my clothes off and embarrass me. Get me to the cross. I'm going to save somebody. <laughs> he endured, for the joy that was set before he did. He endured all the shame. And then... I'm going to prepare a place for you. That's John 14, right down and down.